Denver Broncos mile high view, no commercial. If you want bullshit, there's even more bullshit now out there for you to choose from uh, where they will get rid of the real and sell you the fake. Uh, plenty of that going on. Um, and so we were going to talk about the the bribe search, uh, you know, the Denver Bronco, you know, bribing, you know, because everything they ever learned, this ownership learned about the NFL, they learned from the trust. So and that is, you know, going after names, big splash moves that everybody's getting sick about, sick and tired of hearing. That's uh, going to be the next big thing. I mean, it's like I said, Raiders of the 90s all over again. Um but before we get into that, I just I, we talked off camera, just something dawned on me. I want to talk about these other platforms just really quick. Uh, we took a bow as we deserved, uh, as we even our most arduous de- uh, uh, detractor came and couldn't even say ah, you were wrong. <laughs> you couldn't say that. But anyway, what I'm getting at is that we've seen the reinvention. Uh, we've seen new platforms come on because they got more turds to sell. Much there's more shit to polish and more bullshit to to to, to shove down every Bronco fan's throat. Uh, I came to to a revelation, Colby, and this this is the revelation because it shows you how stupid I am. Uh, I came to the revelation that me and you are like the two guys uh, in the WWE or the WWF. I still like the F, the the, the old school. Anyway. We're the two guys that keep saying, this shit's fake. This shit's fake. <laughs> and, every, and all these WWF people saying, Shh, we know, shut up. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. it, it's just become, it's just so fake anymore. And you, 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 you gave me two guys that have a podcast. Uh, they started sounding like us. And they were talking about the mediocrity of the NFL, that uh, everybody's just, because they're making so much money, they don't even care anymore. It's just. And the fan base too. They got a fan base that um, uh, that's you know just happy to be there. They're just happy to be there. And you know I don't see the Broncos really much different than the Jacksonville Jaguars or the uh, um, the, the the other nobody team out there, the Chargers. Um, uh, we're all happy to be there. Uh, we made an appearance. Ha hooray! And I said, the, yeah, in two weeks, these guys, will all, all of them will be sitting on the, the couch with the Denver Broncos. And there's only a three degree separation between them. But even the Broncos could even beat them. So anyway, so, you know, like I said, we got new platforms that spun off. They have to reinvent themselves as sell turds. Is, do you have any take on that? Yeah. Well, it doesn't surprise me that you have. uh even our detractors out there and even the people that have started their platforms or new podcasters that have started new platforms are reinventing their channels. It really doesn't surprise me. Um, I did a video on my shadow band scouting uh, channel, which I'm surprised it's still up. I'm surprised because they haven't taken it down. It was the state of the Denver Broncos franchise. And I sent it to you and I go into great detail about, uh, the state of the Denver Broncos in today's NFL compared to the Pat Bowen Denver Broncos and the Kaiser Broncos. Um, I want everybody to really understand that uh, when it comes to this franchise right now, uh, it's a laughing stock and I'm not going to sit here and uh, sugarcoat anything. That's not what I do. Um, I'm getting really sick and tired of these so-called fans out there that are proclaiming that they are the greatest fan since, you know, since the bucket man or the barrel man in barrel, uh, barrel. Yeah. barrel man. My apologies, not the bucket man. I apologize for that. Well, the, the, the Broncos have kicked the bucket, but other than that. Uh... They kicked the bucket. I'm just getting really sick and tired of people telling me how great of a fan they are. I really don't give a fuck about your fan status. The thing I care about is the product on the field. That's what I care about. I don't give a fuck about my merch, okay? I give a crap about what I see on the field. I'm really getting sick and tired of hearing that from fans about, oh, I've been a fan since the 70s, 80s, 90s. I really don't care if you've been a fan since that. It doesn't doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but yeah, go ahead. Yes, and I'm just getting really sick and tired of 
people also going on here and, and saying all this bullshit that I've heard for eight years now, which I said was going to happen. I said that now that they have the quarterback and they're tied hip to hip with Russell Wilson, I said, now they're going to go pump up the head coach. They're going to try and go and overpay well, for back it. it let's back it up. Before this, uh, this season even started, me and you said this was the most that's being the Hackett and, and Edgerow. This would be the most uh, flammable coaching staff uh, in Broncos history. And I didn't see any of those other platforms that people go migrate to saying any of this. We have articles and evidence, and we did a video, our last video together, where we bring up factual information and videos that I saved, that this man saved in our archives, that we said that if this thing doesn't turn out the way that you people think it's going to turn out, we are going to hold Doug Valley and these turd polishing platforms accountable. And I'm getting really sick and tired of people not owning up to uh, you. We, you know, to be honest, we had a few people that came on and said, "Hey, you guys were, you guys are right." We've had that slowly but surely. But I'm getting really sick and tired of people saying that we never said that, and uh, that is well, so. No, that is, yeah, well, that they're, hold on, they're they're discredited because all anybody has to do is go and look at our archives. So go ahead. No, absolutely, and our archives speak for for itself. I don't need to come on here and explain to a uh, person that. Uh, we said this, that, and the third. Our, we have video evidence of this. We didn't need to go reinvent our channel and delete the uh, delete the videos that we did. Okay, I, I'm getting really sick and tired of those people. And at the, at this point in time, um, I, I'm just I don't even listen to any of those turd polishers because, quite frankly, those turd polishers don't uh, don't amount to anything because they're liars, manipulators, and they distract you from the problem that is really going on. And their the track, their track record. Well, the track record is pretty pitiful, if you ask me. I mean, they've been wrong for eight years. And why would I why would I sit here and waste my brain cells and my energy and time listening to people that have been wrong for eight years? Go yeah. ahead. No, it, it's something that um, there was a movie called Men in Black, kind of a goofy movie. But there was some truth. There's one kernel of truth is really, really major, especially in this day and age we live in. Tommy Lee says to uh, to Will Smith, he says uh, that most people don't have a clue. They don't have a clue, nor do they want a clue. Then they think they got a really good beat on things. And uh, that's the world we live in now. See, people don't want to think for themselves anymore, and they don't want communication anymore. So what they want is they want a, a pre-produced platform of fake that will tell them all the things that they want to hear. And when they hear all the things they want to hear, they think they're well-informed. And, uh, and and it's really easy to guide these people to the next solution. You know, of course, we, me and you said the next solution would be the coach would be the next thing, you know, that, uh, you know, this was a flammable coach. And uh, you sent me an article, and I think it's hilarious. Uh, the players all of a sudden want to be disciplined. Now, let's let's go back to last year at this time. They were fed up with Fangio because he was holding them accountable and they were going to coach them. So they wanted to get a user friendly coach, Vance Joseph. Do matter of fact, I listen to the turd polishers because they they love taking our our talking points and applying them where it suits them. And they talked about, you know, uh, getting another Vance Joseph, uh, you know, uh, a, a user friendly coach. Right. So. What I'm getting at is that uh, they they tell these people the solution that these people haven't thought for themselves. Now we have what we are saying because uh, we we lead in the you know in the truth of things. Uh, this is a a bribe that's going on. Uh, but, but you know before we get into the the coach bribe search, uh, is there anything else you want to say in, in, on the lo- topic of uh, you know telling it like it is and in, in this kind of thing? Well, the, the reason why I am one of the most hated YouTubers and one of the most hated Bronco supposed fans is because I don't sit there and give an A-plus move to the Denver Broncos, the Valley, because uh, the 
the the turd polishers and Dove Valley told me to give them an A plus. I go look at the film. I go do my own research and I base my opinion on what I see on film and my research. That is the difference between me and these other people and these other uh, platforms. Is I don't go along with the narrative. I don't need to go on my platform and do a live stream and um, cut it off when I'm wrong. I mean that's not who I am. That's <laughs> not the way I do things. Okay. I. I I'm really sick and tired of those people because they don't amount to anything and I'm going to be truthful on what I say and I've been right this whole entire time. We, I've been right in terms of the player personnel on this team and I, 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 one more thing and this is the last thing I'm going to say about it. I am The one thing that is really driving me fucking nuts and really pissing me off because none of these people do the work that I do behind the scenes with the job that I have currently. A lot of people don't understand the job that I have as stressful as it is a lot of people don't understand I don't want to hear from any Bronco fan outside of the people that actually have stood up for us and actually have defended what we've said that you knew all these problems going into this season and for the past eight years that is disingenuous to your audience so you're just backpedaling on what you said this past off season in the past eight years I'm getting really sick and tired of that because you have this guy and yours truly that have been saying this for eight long years. And I understand you've had franchises that have suffered longer than eight years. I understand that, but you're heading that direction. And on my state of the Denver Broncos, I said (laughs) under Pat Bullen, we had more Super Bowl appearances than losing seasons. We went to an AFC championship game in 2006. And if Kyle Shanahan listened to Alex Gibbs, we could have won the Super Bowl that year. We didn't have this long stretch of, the days of the AFL days when Pat Bowen was running this team. We were we were a consistent up upper level tier type franchise. And we, we're gonna segue into bribing coaches and I'll let you speak on that. But uh did Pat Bowen have to bribe coaches to come here? <laughs> no, no, the, the model was this. This is the model. It was very rare that a coaching job would be available. Um, and this goes back to Kaiser, actually, and segue. I mean, you had an owner that had his shit together, getting another owner that had his shit together and, and transitioning that way. Mm-hmm. So it was very difficult to get a job here in Denver. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was coveted to come here. If you had your you didn't need to do that. You know, you uh, uh, you had a. a, a, a Basically, the front office already intact. Uh, you could probably get your own um, scouting or whatever, but you had people that had a clue that were, were running, owned the franchise, and the management that uh, had a clue that, you know, uh, had, was on the same page as the ownership. And then if you were a coach of any merit at all, uh, this would be the kind of ideal job because you could plug in your uh, your system, your, your philosophy into that. So... The bribes weren't weren't uh, weren't needed at all. I got something else to talk about too about what you were talking about the state of the Broncos. Okay, now I I do uh, listen to some of the turd polishers. They had Jim Caldwell on. At what and, and I want to bring this up. What did we say about what have we been saying about player personnel? What what have we been saying about player personnel? It doesn't stack up to the top tier uh, franchise in the national yeah. football. We saw that against the preseason. Uh, we saw that in the preseason against the Bills, and we've been seeing it for eight years now. Okay, exactly. So, what what did what did Bill Caldwell say about um, Dan, uh, Hackett? You know, this being an all a Hackett situation. Caldwell said, "Look at it this way: Was Hackett the guy that?" fumbled the ball in the one and then you got the turd polisher saying oh yeah yeah player personnel player personnel but when we said it remember when melvin gordon this is just one example just one of many examples remember when melvin gordon was was brought in we were like we hit the roof we said what the hell are you doing and then paying him this is the new denver broncos it's splashy moves it's names it's wasting money uh, on 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 people like that, and and this is the thing too, I I believe they're going to get Sean Payton, and I'll tell you why. Because I believe that when you bribe a man, 
uh, you offer a bribe of $25 million annually, that is just too hard to pass up. Plus, talking to Eddie, I haven't been able to speak with him all week. I wanted to get him on the show. He told me that Peyton has no interest in doing what the, the, the head coach in, in uh, Detroit is doing, which is the right model. And I would think if I was a coach, he wants to be plugged into something immediately. But, but here's the thing. You bribe somebody. We'll call him Coach X, Mr. X, whoever that is. You know, we'll say he's the best. Say it's Bill Belichick. I don't care. The best coach ever. He's going to say everything the front office wants him to say. Oh, Russell Wilson, man, I just knew all along that I, me and him just needed to get together. He'll sing. He'll dance. You know, give him a top hat and a cane, and he'll, you know, dance like Fred Astaire and tell you everything that all the front office has been saying all this time. This 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 uh, team is just a coach away, you know. You're paying. You're you are bribing somebody twenty five million dollars per year. He'll tell you anything you want to hear, and I just don't think it's going to translate. But go ahead. No, I think you bring up a great point when it comes to bribing a person um, twenty five million a year. I, I think that's a great point. There, this is where I kind of disagree with you and i'm not saying i fully disagree with you but there's one caveat that i think uh will go against what you said and this is just me speaking okay i don't know how sean payton is speaking because if sean payton comes to the denver broncos i'm really gonna go in on sean payton because on a bribe on a bribe on a bribe but also what he said on fox sports and what i've heard about sean payton is he really, really, really wants the ownership, GM, head coach to be all aligned and that organization be all aligned. If, and he said that on Fox. I can put the link in the description or in the comment section where he said this. If he goes to the Denver Broncos, that goes against everything that he said on live television in front of millions of Americans that were watching that. And if, if you're a Sean Payton fan, I would be very critical if he came to Denver because I, I, I am on the boat where you're at is I don't think it's going to translate. Just like I said, Russell Wilson isn't going to translate. Like I said, Nathaniel Hackett isn't going to translate because he doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the say. You know, there was a great thing that me and you did this last offseason that nobody else pointed out about the Graham Glasgow restructuring of a contract. And I knew the minute that they did that, that, whatever coach they brought in was not going to have say on player personnel, what system he wanted to run and, and all the above, because you have a, you have an organization in the Denver Broncos that don't have an identity that doesn't have a clear vision on what they want to do on both sides of the ball. And in that organization, they don't want to develop anybody who was the last person they developed. Okay. I don't want to hear about Justin, Tony, Lily Simmons or Garrett Bowles. Okay. Those guys don't, amount to shit okay on the field off the field i believe justin simmon is a good human being off the field that's that's a good trait but i'd rather have my uh production on the field rather than off the field but that's my that's my prerogative when it comes to this whole sean payton going to the denver broncos thing i i just in my personal opinion i just do not see him taking the bait because we have seen it so many times from this team, all the empty promises, all the all the promises that they've made that we're just a quarterback away, we're a coach away, the cycling through systems like it's you know a meat factory. Well, well, that that's why I think this fits perfectly in. I mean, it just goes right along with that. You know, you bribe somebody, I, you get. You know, spraying, you know, a big giant fire hose full of cash. And getting names, bringing in names. It just, it falls right in with this. Sell you the, you know, get rid of the real and sell you the fake uh, franchise. I, I just, the Denver Broncos track record over the past eight years has spoken for itself. Mm -hmm. They're not a team that's a head coach away. They're not a team that is a quarterback away. They have so many issues inside that organization and on the field that you, Sean Payton, I just, 
I believe he, I just, I don't think he's going to, I might be wrong. I'll gladly come up here and say I'm wrong, but I just do not think that he is going to take the bait here. He might like what they, what they said, but I just don't think that he is going to take the bait because of the track record of the Denver Broncos. You do not think, and I'm going to ask you this. You don't think that people around the NFL see this product and see this turd and see how bad it has fallen ever since Pat Bowen's left that organization? I think everybody is sick of hearing about the splashy moves that's going to be the magic thing that's going to turn this crap organization around. And I'm, it's crap. Why is, why is this organization crap? It's because the trust drove it through the guardrail. Trust drove it right through. It taught a new an ownership that didn't have a clue how to drive a, a drive a franchise through a guardrail. It did not receive the baton like Pat Bowen did from Edgar Kaiser. You know everything this everything this uh, this this ownership learned they learned from really really bad management, and they're just continuing that that trend splashy moves, uh, clueless to thinking money. You know this isn't the NBA. OK, it just I just don't believe it translates. I think you have to do it. What Detroit's doing right now, what the Bills did, I think it has to go. Uh, through a process of, uh, you know, proper identity, proper development and proper culture, family, this kind of thing. It's not about the billionaire club. And uh, and I think that, that today a lot of people think, you know, just people throwing money all over the place is going to uh, solve problems in, in, in what I see is I just see this even getting worse because if, if Peyton takes the bait, I mean, that's, that's a bit, that's a lot of bait. You got to admit that. Uh, do you think Sean Peyton really will have a voice or is he just going to sing the tune of, of the person that pays the piper him? Okay. Well, is it, are you missing from, a plane? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm just getting notifications on my phone from the NFL and stuff. I, I'm just keeping up with everything right now. I apologize for that. I'm not trying to be rude. Um, no, but no, 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 I, I've, no, I've listened to everything you said. I, I, I agree with that. Just where I'm coming from, if I'm Sean Payton, what, okay. He has said multiple times that he wants, he just wants all the stars to align. You think all the stars align coming to Denver is going to have that happen? You think all the stars are going to align when you come to Denver? You have George Payton who doesn't even have a say. He wanted to have a say last year in Dan Quinn and who tapped him on the shoulder and said, no, Elway. Mm-hmm. And, and, he and, ran, why, why, why was that? Because Elway ran the search committee. Go ahead. Yes, he ran the search. Yes, absolutely. Elway ran the search committee. And I, I just, I think, I think Sean Payton is smart enough to understand that this organization and franchise is so, is so historically bad right now that I just don't think he's going to take the bait because number one, you're you're paying two hundred and fifty million dollars to one person, and that is Russell Wilson, who, by the way, you bribed to come here. You had to bribe and give the Seahawks everything. Who went to the playoffs? Have all these draft picks? Have all these free? Has all this cap money? While the Denver Broncos are struggling in dead cap money, that are still paying players that aren't there, aka Shelby Harris. That's just an example. Yeah, you can't talk about that. You can't talk about that. But again, it's just, it is so mind numbing to me that, it, oh, you know, you have people that, you know, tweet this about how, oh, it's a great day for the Broncos to sign Sean Payton. It's been happening all week. In my personal opinion, I just don't think he's going to come here. I think the guy, I think there's two guys that I think will come here. Okay. And, and this is just my observation and the research I've done. It's either going to be David Shaw. Or it's going to be some. It, it's going to be like D'Amico Ryan's or something like that, where it's going to be another yes man. That because I don't think if if you're Dan Quinn, why would you come here? Because no. you have you you no. you, you, no. you cannot have the same player personnel. Now all of a sudden you're just going to leave Dallas and just oh I'm going to come coach Randy Gregory again when you didn't want to re-sign him in the first place. Yeah. Now now let let me talk about Dan Quinn just really quick. He's not going to get the bribe. 
he's not going to get the bribe. This $25 million bribe is strictly for Sean Payton. It's strictly for Sean Payton. Now, let me, let me, let's play hypotheticals here. I should have, a, I wish I had, like, if I had a production crew, we would, you know, segue in hypotheticals. So That's what we talk about, hypotheticals. Let's say Sean Payton takes the bait, okay? He's getting paid. Now, okay, he's getting, but think of, I want you to think about this for a second. How is, who's he going to get to come along? Because you know, it's fine. You got the bait there, Sean Payton. And we may be buddies, fellow coaches, but I'm not going to go and step into that mess. Even though we're buddies, I mean, who is he going to even bring in? Even if, who's he going to bring in? Who's going to want to stick their neck out as an offensive coordinator? Well, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, just one second. What, what did, what, 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 what was the reports that were coming out that he wanted Vic Fangio to be his defensive coordinator? Right? He wanted Vic Fangio to come along with him. Why would Vic Fangio come back here? Well, you know what? I think what's interesting is Edgero and all this. Who's getting offers? All I, I, I mean, he's I would not. like take the exit. Yeah, he's not coming back. Yeah. He, he's yeah. dude. He, he interviewed. Wasn't it the Falcons put in a request to interview him for the defensive coordinator job? Like he's already looking for other defensive coordinators. Oh, he's been. He's been. Uh, he's been. Uh, He's been invited for head coach, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that too. But I'm also saying that I think he's also – if he doesn't get a head coaching opportunity, I think he's going to leave for a defense coordinator job coaching another year, then he'll eventually be a head coach. Like, I, I think that – I think you absolutely hit the nail on the head when it comes to who is Sean Payton going to bring in here? I mean, seriously? You think that we're going to get top-notch level assistant head coaches? I mean, my goodness. You have uh, – a who, who was saying that the Eagles, John, the Eagles and Giants had a great offseason? This person right here, and they're in the playoffs. Same with the Seahawks. I said the Seahawks had a really good offseason. They went to the playoffs. The Denver Broncos, all, all we heard all offseason is we had the greatest offseason, the biggest trade in NFL history. You mean Post the biggest spot? Host the Bills. Host the Bills. Host the Bills. Host the Bills. That's what we How dare we not say that? How dare we say uh, you're full of shit? How dare we say that? But here we are, you know, here we are. Oh, you'll see Sean Payton. It's, you'll see Sean. Well, let's talk Sean Payton again, just really quick. Let's say there was no bribe. Let's say for whatever the reason, Sean Payton got in an automobile accident and he's got some sort of amnesia. He's not really thinking straight. He comes to the Denver Broncos at free, almost free will, you know, like any other coach. How in the world does Sean Payton in his system that he ran in, in New Orleans, how does it? match up anyway starting from the quarterback on down to the defense how does it match up anyway with what Denver the Denver Broncos have player personnel wise yeah you're, it doesn't even make sense yeah it's because I brought this in the state of the franchise I the state of the Broncos franchise on my YouTube channel shadow band scouting where I said that everybody wants an offensive lineman want to rebuild the offensive line that's that that's awesome but you need to get players that fit a system. You need to get you need to get agile offensive linemen that fit the West Coast zone running scheme. If you're going to do a power run scheme, you need to get power gap guards. You need to get power tackles. You cannot just go out there and grab an offensive lineman here, an agile guard here, a power guard there, a pass protecting center there. You have to get every offensive lineman on the same page that fit a certain system. That's why San Francisco is so good is because every single offensive lineman that they have – fit their zone running scheme and they're all being developed at a rapid pace because they have an identity up there because two is the guy that is, is hip to hip with John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, uh, Adam Peters. And this is why I believe Adam Peters was so essential to the Denver Broncos Super Bowl win is because Pat Bowlen brought him in 2009 and he was in the Denver Broncos organization for six years. And then Elway got fired his ass. And then he went, yep. went to San Francisco yep their player personnel ever since john lynch knows how valuable adam peters is and adam peters knows how valuable that organization is and he and he has turned down gm jobs because he he likes it there because they're a family environment they're a stable organization why would adam peters risk his reputation to go into the cardinals that are cheap that don't give a shit about winning rather him staying in san francisco doing what he does best which is scouting uh, college prospects getting later round prospects a la Malik Jackson and Danny Trevathan in the sixth and seventh round and developing them. Go ahead. Now, 
Now, what you're talking about is the anti-Denver Bronco because it's the anti-splashy move, the anti-Band-Aid. The, you know, d- believe me, just we'll just throw money at the problem. And, and that's, it, it speaks well. That is how you do it. What the Broncos are doing, and, and this is the way I see Sean Payton coming here. It's like, if you give me a four-year contract, so I'm getting $25 million, Okay, so I get $100 million, okay? <clears throat> and, of course, it won't work out. We have, <clears throat> Me and you know that. Maybe they'll make it happy to be their parents. And quite frankly, I, I think that this ownership, that's all they really care about. Is, is just happy to be a few. I think it's the, the Panther group. I think it's all I think that would be a real care about. Um, I really do. I think that that that's, I don't see the minute uh, to get away from the, uh, the the way trust, the trust has been doing things. Um, it's lip service. Throwing all this cash around is, in my opinion, it's just lip service. Uh, it's no substance to it. Um, you know, uh, it also shows me the grip on how to actually do it right. No, you're and absolutely. I don't know if you just froze, but that is a perfect place to freeze. You did freeze. Am I freezing? Yeah, you're freezing. You're freezing. Oh, boy. So. Oh, boy. We're both freezing. Don't you love this app? Okay. Yeah. So, so. The, no, what you're saying about the, uh, the, uh, the ownership group. This is what I was worried about. I, I wasn't buying the hype with this Walton Penner group like these other people were saying. I, I was saying that they were more focused on rebuilding the stadium than rebuilding the product on the field, and that's what they've been doing. They're showing more interest about putting this there in the stadium, building this there in the stadium, rather than starting with the product on the field, then segueing your way into rebuilding the new stadium or whatever you want to do. I'd rather have the product on the field be good because that's what's going to bring you in the big bucks, not rebuilding the stadium. What is going to bring you the money in in today's NFL is the product on the field, not just going out and getting a new half a stadium here, new field there, uh, new scoreboard here you know, new shopping malls in there. I, I don't care about that. I want the product on the field to be a dynasty type uh, product, not this happy to be their product like the Jaguars and Chargers. So, so let me ask you this. Um, you get Sean Payton, again, we're hypotheticals. You, you bring in Sean Payton, how in the world is he going to get all those players you describe with the way they're, they're, uh, they're been taken out at the knees with uh, all these cap uh, hits? Well, also, how are you going to get Sean Payton when you have to? You got to trade all your draft capital for him. I'm not. Well, saying- I, well I, I think they're they're bribing the the. I think they're bribing the uh, the Saints as well. The same ownership. I think they're taking just like the see uh, they did Seattle. Okay, so if you're the Saints, then I then I, if I'm if I am I don't know who the Saints GM is. I, I got it. Uh, I forgot his name. I had it at the top of my head and I lost it. But if I'm the Saints GM, then yeah, then take the bait. I would take it because he, the he's Denver Broncos Ed Peters kind of guy, according to to Eddie. He's uh, he's a line centric guy. But go ahead. No, 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 no. If the Denver Broncos are giving you all this for Sean Payton, take it, take it. But take what? It. What? I don't even know what they they really don't have much to give. I mean, all you're going to take is that that uh, late round, first round. Really? That's well, it. It, it, it. Well, if they're asking for more. Then I would take it. That's what I'm saying. If you're, well, if you're, they made it for cash under the table too. So you know, who knows? But yeah, I, I just this whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing just reminds me so much of the '90s Raiders, the '72 yeah. Buccaneers. I mean, yeah. I, I, I wanted Jim Caldwell, and now everybody wants Jim Caldwell. Everyone's taking my talking points now, which is fine. I don't care. At least people are talking about Jim Caldwell, and it's kind of funny. Ever since Jim Caldwell interviewed here, I haven't heard a lick about Jim Caldwell. It's all about David Shaw and uh, Dan Quinn and Sean Payton. You know, J- Jim Caldwell is a damn good head coach. And well, I, if, I, if I was Caldwell, I wouldn't take. I wouldn't no, judge no, and I think he wants to come here. I think he reads through the bullshit, and I, I think he and he's not. He's a no nonsense type of guy, and he he. I think he's just going to sit and wait for a good opportunity to yeah. uh, present itself. So that's it. Ain't I'm, here. It ain't here. It ain't here. Yeah. No, no, it's not. 
Well, you know, this is the way I see it too. You've got probably three or four years down the tubes. Are we correct? Just, just no matter what, you got three or four years down the tubes. It it could be longer than that, but minimum, right? We're just, I'm just saying, you know. So maybe the since they're already screwed, they just figure, well, maybe we'll just get get give a get rich quick. You win the lottery uh, deal to Sean Payton, and let that you know for four years just you know, muddle around. And then, you know, if we have to get rid of everybody, it doesn't matter. We're getting rid of everybody anyway. So that's kind of how I see that this, this, this thing went because they were stupid enough to get in this $250 million deal that I think we had somebody who posted and they may be right. Maybe that was a part of the package deal to bring Russell Wilson in before, you know, uh, anything else ever happened. So Seattle got the King's ransom and so did Russell Wilson. And they had a, because they they don't know anything but splashy moves that that aren't very good, you know. They don't know how to run a team. The the trust is just right through the guardrail. Uh, and the, believe me, that has Elway's fingerprints all over it um, because that's the only thing he he knows. He doesn't know how to develop anything. But any player, not just quarterbacks, anybody. Um, so uh, that's how I see it. I see this as just a hail mary by the ownership because they know they're fucked for four years, three, four years. So let's try to bring Sean Payton in on a, on a bribe and uh, just let it muddle around for four years, and then we'll go from there. But that's that's my my take on it. Well, um, I, I just don't think Sean – in my personal opinion, I don't think that Sean Payton is going to take the bait. I think that – from what I've seen, I think he's smart enough to realize that this organization isn't the same organization that it was under Pat Bullen. I think that the Denver Broncos are going to probably fall on the you know side of probably bringing in a David Shaw to be another yes man for a couple of years. I think they're going to, I don't know. I, I just, this whole coaching search has been a uh, big old uh, mirage. Um, in terms of what is really going on in this organization. So I, I think at the end of the day, they're probably going to get a uh, probably a David Shaw or another yes man. And they're going to have to bribe some assistant coaches or something to bring him in or something. I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I at this point, I, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they get Sean Payton, but I just don't think Sean Payton is going to take the bait. And if Sean Payton comes here, when we do a video, if this happens, I'm going to go balls to the wall to Sean Payton and be like, dude, I, I've i lost all respect for you, dude. From what you said on countless occasions that you want this, this, and this to line up and you go to the Denver Broncos because of money, I mean, that really shows where your true loyalty lies. You don't want to be a Bill Belichick or Sean McDermott or a uh, or a Dan uh, 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 the Lions coach. You know, you don't want to be any of that. You just want you're just here for the money. And I would lose all respect for you, dude. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if we'd ever get the truth on the exact amount of that contract that would ever really come out. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it would be it would I it would be a, a, a probably be the biggest con just it'd be the probably the biggest coaching contract. Yeah. Yeah. It will probably be the biggest contract coaching contract in the NFL and it, it will probably enough be another it, it will probably be another fail in the Denver Broncos history where they oh, that, have, that, that, anybody that comes it, is, be a, it would be uh, un, this. it would be un, anybody, anybody that comes in it's going to be a fail yeah yeah yep I agree yeah anything else no that is it for me me too I I don't see anything else, but uh, it's just, you know, uh, businesses, I mean, the same old splashy moves, uh, cluelessness, money going all over the place. Um, and um, I just don't think they, they, I think they've painted themselves in a corner. So, yeah, uh, sure. Maybe they, you know, maybe they, uh, they get nine, maybe they make that happy to be their appearance. But this, this organization is in no way going to be relevant other than, you know, a once in a while happy to be there playoff appearance that you know, we'll call it a Super Bowl. And we have more than enough fans here that that's all they're clamoring for. They're just clamoring for just happy to be there. 
you know, a, 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 a celebrity, you know, a, a, a once just a one time appearance. That's a Super Bowl now to to a half or a certain amount of these fans here. They've lost what it really meant to be, you know, the dynasty that the the Bronco organization was and is. So it's going to be a while before they're really relevant in real terms, real terms. Yeah, go go go! Put on that Peyton Manning jersey and take off your Floyd little Floyd little jersey. You. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, we're cheering mediocrity now. That's what it all comes down to. We're cheering on losing seasons, but not really because uh, once they start showing their true colors, we take our stream down and flip the camera off. And yeah, because that they're the best fans that ever walked on the face of the earth. I think they're the biggest hypocrites that ever walked on the face of the earth. But that's that's another story. I completely agree with you. All right, that's it for me. That's it for me. All right. Until next, until I don't know, they get, you know, find out what happens, you know, with the. With the coach. The useless coaching thing. It's not going to translate. Yep. Three to four years minimum. Yep. Minimum. All right. Oh, because. Is Russell Wilson going to, is Russell Wilson himself going to reinvent himself into Drew Brees? Is <laughs> Russell Wilson, that, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. They're selling you that shirt too. They're, they're oh, selling you that. The best, uh, the best podcast money can buy. All right. Take care. Yep. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.